warning. The following video shows what happens when an idiot has a camera. Viewer discretion is advised. JJ Abrams and Ryan Johnson were not involved in the making of this video. Any anger or dissatisfaction felt is purely coincidental. So, M140i is pretty good as a car, generally speaking. As a sports car, however, it's... It's, you know, it leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> People keep saying about how how affordable it is to buy one. Of course it's affordable because they don't install many things that you end up wishing you had and end up spending on after you buy it. So yes, it's affordable to buy one initially. Uh, very good price. I was surprised at the price at the time. And, uh, and I suppose part of the fun of owning one is modifying it. So, first things first, limited slip diff. I want to see if it will change the behavior of the car. We have two options, I think two, two major options. One is of course is the M Performance Limited Slip Diff. And uh, I, oh my goodness, I forget the name right now of the uh, alternative, the aftermarket that lots of people are installing. Um, so why, why install a limited slip diff? Uh, they're very expensive. They're, uh, I think the cheapest I can find it here in Cyprus is 3,000 euros for the end performance. That's a lot of money. That's excluding installation. And uh, I just feel as if the car, I, I feel as if the car has too much power for, for the chassis. I think uh, a lot of the time the electronics step in, reduce the power to save the car, to save me and the car. And uh, I, I've, I'm not sure. I feel as if one of the reasons is the way, is the open diff. I feel as if, I feel that the open diff is a Achilles heel for this car, for the, for the power it has. Uh, it's, uh, it's unlikely I'll see much of a difference. Uh, I'm, I'm not expecting to see a huge difference, but even a small difference, uh, even if it manages to keep the power down, you know, keep traction uh, for a fraction of a second, uh, a second longer uh, than it normally would have, uh, I think I'll be quite happy with that because it's the little things that make the difference. So. Yeah, too much power for the for the chassis, and uh, I think the limited slip diff will help correct that. Second mod that I'm considering is a Blue Spark box. I've read pages and pages and pages and pages of forums comparing the Blue Spark to the JB Plus box. JB Plus is a very easy tuning box to install. You just uh, it just it takes 20 seconds to install it. Uh, Blue Spark is slightly, slightly more difficult. It might take only two minutes to install it, but um, it's uh, it's still an easy tuning box to install compared with JB4 or something else. Um, I'm not sure if anybody here in Cyprus can do stage two tuning or anything like that. I haven't. No, I'm 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 not sure. That's why I'm considering a tuning box because I can do it myself, and it's. Uh, if I don't like it, I can remove it. Now, I just said a second ago, the car has too much power, so why would I want to increase the power? I don't want to increase the power. It's That's not what I'm going for. I, I don't like the response rate of the car. Uh, when I put my foot down on the accelerator, uh, the amount of time the car takes to drop a couple of gears and, and understand that I want to I want to accelerate, it's, it's fractions of a second, but they're just it's just unsatisfying I want to see if the response rate if the the response rate of the car will will improve I think blue spark does improve that I don't think JB plus does but um, right now I'm considering blue spark more than JB plus uh, I'm waiting for the warranty to expire on the car and I'm not going to install anything like that on the car before the warranty expires and so that's in six months from now so in the meantime I can fit the limited slip diff again if it's OEM and it's within the warranty period I have nothing to worry about if I 
fit aftermarket who knows who knows what the dealer how the dealer will use that against me who, probably not they probably won't but who knows who knows so why take the chance fit OEM buy the dealer and you'll be happy spacers I think the next I think the next mod this car needs for aesthetic reasons I don't think it will improve handling quite a lot I like the Motec stance and the, the new springs and the and the and the spacers on the wheels I think I think I would install the spacers first see how that changes the car and then go for the springs I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily lower the car initially and that's not because I like the way it looks or how tall it is or anything like that but for practicality reasons for practical reasons taking into account uh, the humps in the road, speed bumps. I think uh, I like the, the clearance that, that it currently has, which is already, uh, I think, is it not much, just 10 millimeters lower than the non M performance, non M package cars. I think uh, lowering it more, uh, this, is, this is a particularly mild one here, it's not a good example, but there's some, some really aggressive speed bumps, and I'm I like the peace of mind. That's why I also don't install a, a front uh, splitter. Maybe I'm. Uh, I would have to install it and see the difference to have a, a, a an educated opinion on it. But my uneducated opinion is that it would the, the front splitter would probably result in the in hitting speed bumps more and lowering the car at the same time would just make it uh, very difficult to. It, it, these cars are meant to be everyday. Uh, everyday cars they're not meant to be sports cars so if you start to uh, compromise the everyday usability of the car by lowering it by making it impractical uh, then you know some people have installed roll bars in the back and removed all the, the, the back seats and all that well if, if that's what you were intending to do with your car you should have bought a sports car and not not an M140i an M140i is an everyday car you can take it to the shops you can take the family for a ride you can go on a long drive as well it's not a car that you're gonna to take to the track very often it's not a track car it's a it's an everyday car and as soon as you start spending money modifying it into a track car then you you chose the wrong car for yourself in my humble opinion respect to everybody everybody should do whatever they want with their property so uh, this is not a diss in any way, it's just my opinion. Another mod I would do on the car is uh, install the mesh behind the front grille. I think that's a good idea. I don't, I haven't noticed any uh, damage to the radiators, so I, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not doing it because I've had something happen, uh, but uh, yeah, it's a good idea. If, if that's how the new cars come, if they come with a mesh behind the grill, and uh, and then obviously the OEM decided that was necessary for a reason, then I think uh, doing the same is uh, is a wise is a wise decision. So the the bumper needs to come off to do that, and uh, yeah, okay. If the bumper needs to come off, then we might as well do it at the same time as uh, wrapping the bars at the front. A lot of people they're currently black. A lot of people wrap them in a color. I think I would go for blue. Uh, perhaps I might go for something a little bit crazier. But uh, yeah, the, if the bumper is going to come off for the mesh, then I'll wrap the, the bars at the front. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's my that's my wish list right now. Um, that's what I would spend my money on. Perhaps I should mention that on this car, I currently have run-flat tires. I had run-flat tires on my previous car, on my previous one series, and they did save me once. I owned that car for maybe 10 years. Uh, let's think about it. Actually, I owned that car for 12 years. And uh, I only needed the run-flats to work once in those 12 years, but they did work and they did make me uh, little bit have a soft spot now for run flat tires so the default option on this car was the uh, the Michelin Supersports 
but I optioned the run flats purely because of those sentimental reasons. Um, it's a small country, if you, wherever you break down, you'll get help pretty quickly. Uh, but like I said, run flats helped me just once in 12 years of owning that car and uh, just once in oof, goodness gracious 20 years of driving nevertheless regardless <laughs> despite all that I still chose run flats on this car and perhaps lost some performance and perhaps lost, lost some stability uh, so perhaps again one of the modifications the future modifications if it can be considered a modification either when the when the tires reach their useful life or perhaps before then is to replace them with the uh, summer tires with the, the Michelin Super Sports. I call them summer tires. I know that they're that they are all year round tires. They're not specifically designed only for summer uh, seasons, but um, yeah, I'll definitely fit them and see if they make a difference to the performance. I'm I will not stick to to the run flats when these definitely when these reach their useful life, I will replace them with non-run flats and uh, even before then if the limited slip diff and the blue spark box change the behavior of the car su such that I want to take it to uh, a racetrack, then in that case, the tires have to be replaced and you can't, I don't think you can go to a racetrack with run flat tires. Be quite interesting if the run flats were the reason I had better traction in the wet compared to, to the dry, because during launch control it seemed to me I was getting a lot of wheel slip a lot of wheel spin in dry conditions and in wet conditions in both traction mode and sport plus mode it seemed like in wet conditions I had improved traction that'd be quite that'd be quite interesting if the run flats improve your traction in the wet conditions somehow we'll have to research that a lot more no idiots were harmed during the making of this video.